Today I'm going to be talking about methanol. Uh, and my name is Adina, I'm a research consultant. And our agenda is we're going to talk about methanol. Is it the fuel of the future? The uses of methanol and then bur burning properties. And then we're going to talk about the pool fire uh, experiments that we did here in DBI during summer. Uh, the experimental setups, uh, the results, conclusion, and the future work. So, methanol, fuel of the future. So the methanol market uh, is currently going through a huge phase change, and um, and it's predicted that by 2030 it's going to be up to 300 percent. Um, and uh, especially since we are in maritime and uh, ener tran energy and transport uh, department, we're looking at the shipping industry, and the shipping industry is also having a huge shift into using uh, methanol as a fuel option for instead of uh, heavy fuel oil. Um, and if we talk about the methanol itself, it's a carbon alcohol, it's colorless in appearance and miscible with water and toxic and also flammable. And um, methanol is also used in other different industries in like to produce uh, plastics, paints and cosmetics and other things. Uh, so here it is, a little uh, graphics of what we can do with methanol, and we are focusing on uh, the marine fuel as an application. So burning properties of methanol. Uh, so methanol flashpoint is 11 degrees. Uh, to give you context, some of you know, some of you don't, flashpoint is the uh, the temperature at which the va uh, flammable clouds, vapor clouds will form uh, on the liquid surface. So for uh, methanol, it's 11 degrees. That means that it, when it is, when the surrounding temperature is above 11 degrees, there will be some flammable clouds on uh, methanol fuel, uh, met methanol. And then if it's below 11, then there will not be any flammable cloud uh, formation. Um, the flammability limits, if you compare with gasoline and diesel, it has a very wide uh, flammability range. That means it can uh, uh, burn in these concentrations in air. Uh, minimum ignition energy is also very low. Uh, if you, to give you a context of what the minimum ignition energy is, so people typically cannot feel any uh, electrostatic shock when it is below uh, one millijoules. And if for methanol, it is 0 0.14 uh, millijoules. And then uh, for the typical uh, brush discharge is 4 millijoules for, from uh, flat polyethylene sheets. OK? Uh, also, we're talking about here, the methanol burns with pale blue uh, flames, and it is uh, invisible or very hard to vis visible uh, in the outdoor conditions. So, uh, methanol pool fires. To give you a little context and uh, spare myself from uh, some questions, why we did this experiment. So, uh, we did some literature review and we found that uh, there are two things that we uh, will uh, when we talk about methanol and the uh, flammability of methanol. So when methanol is burning, uh, the, there was an experiment done by Rice uh, Institute in Sweden. And uh, when methanol is burning, when you add or d it, when you try to extinguish uh, methanol by, with water, you need to add 90% more water of the methanol content. They found that that's the percent where you need to add or 90 or more percent you need to add in order for to extinguish the methanol or to make the <clears throat> how do you say the uh, the pool uh, in flam not flammable uh, when we're talking about mixed methanol and water then we found that it was there was only one uh, thesis topic that was written that we found that 65% of water content uh, will make the methanol mixture uh, not flammable. So we wanted to check this because it was a very long, it was a thesis from very long time ago. 
Uh, and it was Swedish thesis, thesis and uh, other papers were only citing this, but it, it didn't really have translation or anything, so we wanted to check this. Um, so the experimental setup, what we did was we looked at three different tray sizes. Uh, we had some thermocouples installed every 10 centimeters or so. We diluted uh, methanol with water, so we first checked the pure methanol, uh, and then we added some more water, 10%, uh, 10% 30%, 50 65 and then <clears throat> we also added, well, we checked 70. Um, we used thermal cameras and regular cameras and the exhaust duct for gas sampling. So uh, our results, as it is expected, uh, you uh, with increasing uh, tray diameter of the methanol pool fire, uh, you'll have more heat release rate, and then heat release rate goes down as you add water. So have 10 percent, 30 percent, and then 70 percent. <clears throat> So now we're going to talk a little bit about fire dynamics of methanol. Um, so we have a pool of pure methanol here. What happens when, you, <coughs> when it starts burning? There is a heat loss in convection and radiation. There is radiation feedback from the flame to the pool. There is <coughs> heat absorbed by methanol. Uh, and then there is evaporation. Now, what we're going to do is we'll add uh, water and some ethanol. There is uh, uh, heat loss in convection and radiation. There is radiation feedback, heat absorbed <coughs> by water and methanol. There is uh, methanol and water evaporation. So, <coughs> so the water and methanol is evaporating, hence the, there is a lower temperature, a flame temperature in here. So <clears throat> if you look at the burning patterns, uh, as an example, we take 50 centimeter tray. This is pure methanol burning until uh, around 30 minutes. Then we add water. So when you add water, uh, there's, uh, the heat release rate is lower. That's because there is energy that is spent uh, to ev evaporate not only methanol, but also water. Um, 30 percent, so it takes more time <clears throat> because you also need to uh, spend energy to evaporate the water. It takes more time for it to evaporate the, the methanol and the water to burn. And then we have 65 percent, which is uh, very low, but then there is not enough methanol there to burn. And then 70, naturally. <clears throat> It's uh, close to 65. Then the temperature variations as expected. So here we have 10 centimeters above uh, the tray. It's very high temperatures and then it goes up. It goes uh, lower and lower as we go higher and higher. Uh, so what the, the observations, the burning patterns, so at the beginning, we talked about uh, methanol being pale blue. Uh, but in here, you can see some orange. We think that this is because of the tray. The impurities on the walls of the tray is creating some uh, orange flames. There are some patches over here. Once the methanol starts, there's getting less methanol. There are some patches that form over there and over there. <coughs> um, and then next. Uh, at the beginning, we talked about uh, that methanol flames are hardly visible, but here you can see it's, it was indoor conditions, but the lighting was very good. But still, you can see the flames, you can see the pale uh, blue flames, you can see the orange flames, but, but we, there were some videos where... Here we see a different incident. Sneva's car is in the pits. And it backfires, causing Rip Mir's car to burst into flames. This is a fire you cannot see. It's an alcohol fire. Both Rip Mir's and his team mechanics are alike. The driver, driver is running around, but you can't see anything. He's like, you would think that he's getting crazy, but he's just, it's fire. He's on fire. Dilemma 
the next one. This is a large this is truck. A cargo of highly flammable liquid methanol. You can see that uh, the wheels were on fire. But we soon come to the conclusion there's something else going on because we could actually see that the metal gantries on top of the tanker actually melted. The Cheshire Police spotter plane was overhead. These remarkable pictures taken by Fire Officer Richard Smith show the real danger posed by the fire. As soon as we switched on to thermal imagery, you could actually see this, uh, the tanker was really, really burning well. We've got the thermal image camera on and the tanker is well aligned over. Methanol is a clear liquid. Uh, if it's on fire, you can't see it. It doesn't give off any smoke. Only the spotter plane's crew could see the flames. They also use the camera's sophisticated computer imaging to analyze the temperature in different parts of the tanker so that water could be directed on the section most likely to explode. You, you really need to get the jet. So, in these videos, you cannot see, only the thermal cameras can uh, detect methanol flames. So, what we, we were also curious about this, if you can see it from the, out, in the outside. Uh, clearly, in the daylight conditions indoors, but in the very good uh, lighting, you can see them. Uh, so what we did was uh, we did some simple experiments outside. And this is, uh, here you can see that methanol, pure methanol is burning. So there, that's the indoor condition, and this is the outdoor condition. And then here, we have methanol burning. And then here's the thermal imaging. So, the conclusions. <clears throat> the conclusion is that uh, combustion of methanol is possible up to 70% of water dilution. Uh, we actually were curious how high we can go with this. And then we did some uh, <clears throat> tests, simple tests with like 80% and 75%. And then we found that you can actually uh, burn methanol in 73% of uh, water content. Um, and then hydrolysis rate is correlated to the diameter and the water content. Uh, and then the visibility indoor uh, is there, but it decreases with uh, increasing water content. Um, and then the flames are invisible. Uh, it doesn't matter how, how, what's the percentage of methanol or is it pure methanol, uh, it's still invisible. The future work, as uh, Mohammed mentioned before, we are going to do some uh, uh, small-scale experiments to see the vapor cloud explosions of uh, methanol. And then after that, hopefully, we'll do the large-scale experiments. Any burning questions?